You'll see more of Mr. Levi Lavalley this December on CBS Sports Network as part of the ISOC Snowcross Championship. Don't miss that. Coming up next, Speeding with Style, where this guy, John Getter, is attempting to hold his championship lead from Elk River, where he dominated, not losing a single heat. But in this event, he's going to have to hold off his hard-charging younger brother, who's coming back from injury. The qualifiers here began with Mike Hurd and Tyler Nelson. Unlike Elk River, this course started off with dual side-by-side -side ramps. With some impressive tricks and fast racing, Mike Hurd would advance. In the second round of qualifying, it was Adam Thien and Brandon O'Leary going head to head. They raced, chased, and threw down some huge tricks, but it would be O'Leary who would prevail and advance to the next round. So now Hurd had to face off with the Elk River champ, John Getter. Getter didn't lose one round in Elk River, and he would continue his streak in this race to advance through to the final championship bracket with huge tricks like that. The next round, though, was our first chance to see John's brother, Derek Getter, back from a seven-month back injury layoff. And Derek showed he had only one week back on the ramps, but in speed and style, he knocked off the rust quickly. Look at this bracket matchup. We've got an anticipated matchup here of brother versus brother. But first, business to attend with. We start out at the bottom half of the championship bracket with the first matchup of Hurd and O'Leary. Staged, ready to go at the start line. And one of these guys will advance to face off with one of the Getter brothers. All right, now this is speeding with style. So granted, you want to throw big tricks, but you want to be dang fast around the track as well. So here we go, Heard on the far side, O'Leary closest to us. They are waiting for the flag, and they're off. Green flag. Wow, Mike Heard with a big hole shot. Wow, the surprise there is Heard really was pushing, and you don't want to go into these ramps too quickly. You know, you have to really be on. Whoa! Big a get off, Mike Hurd. Well, we talked about oh, when you yeah, don't yeah, control yeah. your speed going into the ramp, problems happen. Definitely. And Mike Hurd going down hard, but he's moving around. He's talking to our race officials. We That's have, a good sign. We have excellent medical staff, some of the best. Wow, we should take a look. I, what went wrong here, Paul? Something happened in the air. You know, it, it's hard. You, you've got two mindsets. He, he looked rushed and he missed his grab. And man, fortunate he got back to the quad. Could have been much, much worse. And also lucky that O'Leary didn't actually <laughs> right. run him over when he landed. Right. Here you see, oh. Yeah. Kind of like looked like he was going to hit the bar and then was going for the seat grab or something. Definitely reached, missed the grab. Not good. We just got word from our race director. He's talking, complaining of pain in his ankle, and we'll have an update when we come back. Welcome back to the Heydays Power Sports Extravaganza, presented by Kawasaki there. You see the ambulance taking Mike Hurd off our course, and the word is he has a sprained ankle and certainly a bunch of road rash from this crash, but otherwise seems okay. They just want to fully check him out, Paul. and. Our race director has talked to all of these guys. They are a close-knit group. Let them know that Mike Hurd is okay so they can focus back on their racing. Look at this, the matchup we've been waiting for. <laughs> Getter versus Getter. John versus Derek. Now, John, in the last round in Elk River, he didn't lose a single heat. He was pretty much untouchable. But Derek Getter, he's back. A seven-month injury layoff due to a broken back. And here he is, one week after being on the quad, racing his brother. Looks like Derek, whole shot. Wow. I do believe that's the first time that John's even been beat to the corner in the speeding this style. Well, both guys well controlled going into the oh. ramp. <laughs> the big flip from John Getter, but a nice hard attack there from Derek. These guys are ripping, tight racing. I don't think we've seen anything no, like this yet. and there, Derek makes a pass on the inside. We, we <laughs> haven't seen racing like this so far. Like, <laughs> little brother is pushing big brother for sure. So here they go around the hole that we see in our other races. 
Derek wow. with huge extension. Tricks like that are definitely going to get the judges' attention. What's going on? We've got something going on. With it, it, it looked like John Getter actually came up a little bit short there. Huge holy huge grab. Huge holy grab. Oh, oh dead sailor. I wonder if John had trouble with the machine from landing short. So Derek Getter is going to come across the line first. And I dare say the judges are definitely going to give him the nod. I think that little brother may have just handed big brother his first heat loss in speeding with style. You know, the judges have seen John Getter flip this quad a lot. As spectacular as it is, the judges have seen it. Getter is back on the scene. He's kind of like a fresh face. He's racing his brother really hard, but when it comes to the tricks, what's surprising me is how big and clean his extensions are. Derek really does extend his tricks out. Oh, that's where John Getter had the problem. Came up way short on that landing. Here we are waiting for the judge's decision. Oh, Derek Getter takes it. He wow. goes through to the championship final. Now big brother John is going to have to race again to try and get into the final. Look at Derek here with this huge extended holy grab. I mean, he's not connected to that quad at all. I can't believe he's only been back on the machine one week. So John Getter had to rush back to the start. He has to now go up against O'Leary. One of these guys will get a second chance and go into the final against Derek Getter. No Who are you favoring no this No rest one? for the weary. I, I, I have to go with big boy John Getter. He, he does have the backflip. I think maybe he was nervous in the last round with his little brother. So they're off the start line, and John Getter racing hard. <laughs> but you've got to remember, he came up short. He cased that landing. Has that done anything to the machine? That's a good question. No backflip. He wow. very well could be checking it out. Well, the backflip normally is what makes the judges sit up and take notice when John Getter is on track. We didn't see it there. Maybe he's kind of holding it back. Maybe he wants an impact trick. <laughs> that, that's possible. You saw his little brother advance with no backflip. We'll see as he comes around and lines up for this ramp. <laughs> oh, pulling it hard around the corner. Again, no flip, big extension. But look at the gap between him and O'Leary. O'Leary, I have to say, his execution is nice. A whole run with no flip wow. from John Getter. The time differential is big, though. Oh, and O'Leary uh, misses a trick. Dead sailor. That will be the difference maker in this round. It's up to the judges, but crystal ball, what are you saying? I'm going to say that John advances the debt. Look at this gap. Seven seconds is the time differential, which is seven points from the judges. Add that with the I, dead sailor. I think knock. Getter may have this one. So let's take a look at this non-backflip round from John Getter, who had a great hole shot here. He looks like a bona fide racer off the start here. Great jump, great hole shot, but no backflips in this run. So the concern was whether there was any problem with John Getter's machine. This is where we'd normally see that backflip, but he chose to go for a right side up trick. And O'Leary already starting to lose ground. There it is. John Getter wins. He advances <laughs> against his brother. He's pointing He's at his brother who's throwing, throwing the start line. Throwing down the gauntlet. Getter versus Getter in our championship final. This was the last time they met. Derek with big extension. John with a flip, but he shorted it. That allowed Derek to take a nice lead on the track. And once Derek had that lead, he really never let go. But really, it was the mistake there that John Getter made on the landing that caused him all kinds of problems. And now they are <laughs> lined up for the championship final. John Getter, he's got to be out of breath. He's, he's already run two tight heats. He's not, you know, he's not a racer. He's a freestyle guy. He's not used to this back-to-back -back heat races. So obviously they train together. They spend a lot of time together. But at this point in time, being uh, a brother doesn't matter, no, right? No, I'm going there. They're letting it all hang out. Wow, fast starts for both <laughs> riders. Derek again with a great hole shot. But remember, you've got to slow your pace down coming into the ramp. Oh, oh! the flip! Wow, a little bit short. There oh, it goes, takes the inside, cuts off little brother. 
That was great riding from John Getter. I think he's upset that he actually <laughs> lost one heat in this championship to his brother. His perfect record is gone. Oh, this is nice. Fast racing, so if they stay like this, it really is going to come down to the tricks on the track. Absolutely. Big extension. Oh, look at both both brothers. Huge extension, great execution. I, I, actually, I was impressed at how well extended John was right there. Similar trick from John, but a much bigger let go trick there from Derek. Oh, wow. Look how close they are. Super tight. <laughs> a second. One, One second. second between them. Oh, so I got to ask you are the judges going to reward that big flip from John? Yeah, boy, that's a tough one. It's a, it's a huge trick, but Derek's extension on that holy grab, so big. So here we see the whole shot. Both guys practically neck and neck, <laughs> but Derek makes the turn first. And I was a little worried about them going so fast into the ramp. Derek with a huge extension. Even though John flipped, my eyes were drawn to Derek. And I like the fact that he did the Indian air, then he twisted his hips back around again. So he really accented that trick. But John, John. <laughs> taking him on the inside. That was a racer move if I've ever seen one. So Getter, I think, John Getter, because there's two Getters in this race, John was really concerned about the time. But huge technical tricks from young Derek. Boy, I tell you, this one's just too tight to call. Folks, just in from the judges, it's a tie. Oh. And because of the tiebreaker wow. rules, it's the fastest lap that gives you the win. And John Getter will take our championship in speeding with style. <laughs> wow. Unbelievable. And this is where it happened. The technical scores went to Derek. But John, who lands second out of that backflip, beats his young brother on the inside of the course and wins on speed. Lorette? Derek, congratulations. Second place in the Speeding with Style Championship. Did you know what your brother had in store for you? Kind of. I mean, we've been uh, training together the last week, and, uh, you know, he's flipping right now. Unfortunately not. Um, but, you know, we it was a good race out there. We had fun, and it's been tough this year. I've had a, a back injury all year, and I just got back on it. So it, it's good to have good people behind us and, like, Can-Am getting me back out here. And uh, it's fun dicing with my brother, you know, like trying to park me in the corners. I just couldn't catch him at the end. Well, Derek, congratulations, second place. And John Guetta, you are the champion of speeding with style. Out here, there's a couple of different sets of ramps. Did you have your choice? Yeah, you know, uh, we had a free ride and an Aussie comp, and I just feel really confident flipping the Aussie comp, but the free rides were feeling really good, so I decided to do some of my more stylish tricks on the free ride and then flip the Aussie and uh, try to go as fast as I can. He was putting a lot of pressure on me. Uh, the last time, I didn't have that much pressure, so it's nice to have my brother out here pushing me, and he got me. Uh, right before the end, and I was a little upset, but you know, I made a mistake. That's how it goes, and I got him back in the end. And you brothers tied, but because you were fastest, you walked away with the championship. What does this mean to you? Oh, it's cool. You know, I've, we've never done anything like this, so uh, to have to be the champion for like the first, uh, you know, the first series, I guess, was pretty sweet. So, you know, I just got to say thanks to KNAM, PP, and Maxis for putting us on good equipment and uh, making our jobs easier. Great job. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Two of our three championships are already decided here at the Mystic Lubricants Terracross Championships. The Mystic Lubricants Terracross Championship on CBS Sports Network is being brought to you by Polaris. Razor sharp performance only from Polaris. Find yours at Polaris.com. And by Raf Racing, when quality matters. So that closes out the Mystic Lubricants Terracross Championship, and Doug Gust wraps it up in style. He's down with Lorette Nickel. Digger Doug Gust walks away a champion in the side-by-side -side class. Were you willing to put it all on the line? Oh, I did. I knew uh, you know it was going to be a long shot today to win it overall over Carlson, but uh, you know I did what I needed to do, and um, he had some bad luck, I guess. But uh, that's racing, and. Uh, well, I'm just so happy. Uh, I want to thank all my sponsors, Nielsen's, uh, Max's Tire Fox Shocks, uh, Mystic Lubricants, all the guys at home. Boy, they've done a great job. Kenny Newbauer at American Metalcraft to help me out to get here. Just everybody, Joe Duncan for putting this on, CBS Sports Network. Man, this is great. It's awesome. And you said you were nervous. Why was that? 
You know, I've been racing for 30 years. You think the nervousness would go away, but I still had the jitters on the start line because I knew the championship was here, you know, and uh, I wanted to win it bad. Great job, Digger. Thank you. Hats off to champion Doug Gust and to our in-race analyst, Chris Brandt, who put on a great race today, Lorette. Here, not only with the racer, but my co-host, Chris Brandt, you put a pass on that moved you from fourth to second. Talk about that. Well, first off, I feel weird that I don't have a mic in my hand. <laughs> and second, you know, that's that was my goal for the race. I was starting in the back row, try to get a decent start, and then wait for the carnage to happen, and it put me in the right spot. What were the difficulties out there? Well, for one, I was you're just eating dirt and dust the entire time. Like, I was literally having to spit out my helmet, which kind of sounds disgusting, but, um, you know, it's, it's trying to keep your machine in one piece. This course is so gnarly, and there's a lot to that, but um, I, I just wanted to put a clean race on and go have fun. Great job, Chris. Thank Tess, you. let's go back up to you. Thanks, Lorette and Chris. What an amazing season it's been, Paul. Doug Gust taking that side-by-side. Daryl Rath earlier wrapping up the quad championship. And for the first time ever, we had speeding with style, and we crowned John Getter our champion. Getter goes upside down to take it over his own brother, and there are our three Mystic Lubricants Terra Cross champions for 2012. And I can't wait for next year. For scores, highlights, features, and more, go to cbssports.com. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network.